and welcome to the Desert of Desolation. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, we are playing the adventure of the Oasis of the White Palm, the second of the uh, adventures in the Desert of Desolation series from 1st edition converted to 5th edition. Um, our, our players are all set, ready to go. First, let's start with our channel host. You're watching his channel right now. This is Michael, a.k.a. Zareft. Michael, what character are you playing with us tonight? I'm playing Derelux. The Great. The Great. Oh, gosh, darn it. I fell right into that one. Uh, uh, Derelux, the dragonborn fighter. Born from the, raised in arenas as a slave. To one is freedom, and now an adventure because... Oops. 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 What do you got, like, <laughs> child support to pay now, or what? No. He, <laughs> he accidentally let out a... Uh, a free. Oh, that oops. oops. Oh, I, thought, I, th I thought he killed the Triceratops. That oops. Uh, well, that Triceratops had a come as you're about to find out in this session. <laughs> also joining us tonight is uh, Jody. Jody, who are you playing? I am Fro in the photo. I'm a Hobbit. Well, I've been mean, half thing. Can't have copyright infringement in this game. <laughs> It's the blank wall behind me. <laughs> and not the so blank wall behind there. Anyway, I am Fro. I am a purveyor of great entertainment and a teller of great tales and a cook of great everything but soup. And I am in the process of negotiating great spice trade routes between the desert and the fine mm -hmm. cities of the north. And I've somehow become entangled with this, uh, the main innkeeper's daughter in the process. Nice. But he, approved. he gave me a sword to work with, so I think I think we're uh, I think I have, I have his uh, seal of approval right now. Nice. Yeah, I was about to say he has an actual seal, just a, that gives you a nod. <laughs> right. You've not been back in the kitchen. You don't know what's in there. <laughs> okay, so Peter. Who are you playing tonight? I am I am Mug Mug the Menacing. Yes. I I am a great gladiator fighter, uh, re renowned throughout all of the land. Me in my comfy chair. I travel with my companions to help undo the um, the great dose of uh, Darlax the Great. <laughs> dose. Indeed. I think Daryl is going to cringe that he's going to give the recap this session. <laughs> so uh, give us the recap, Pete. Last time, uh, we were underneath the Sand Voyager's guildhouse um, fighting some dark elves. They were very, very mean. Um, they, they made it very, very dark. Uh, we couldn't really see what we were doing, so we, uh, we, 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 we pulled back, took the defensive, um, they, they sent spires at us and, uh, shot arrows at us and, uh, uh, made us all webbed and we, we burned them all. We burned them all to a crisp. It was quite, quite, quite a daring adventure. Um, I'm, I'm out of hair, but, uh, don't mind the burnt smell. <laughs> I, I, I'm washing off in the EO bathhouse now. <laughs> Yeah, so, so basically we fought a bunch of drow and spiders and so forth. It was a long battle, last entire session. Lit a fire, Muggle got caught in it, and a lot of his hair got burned off. But but Fro got the finishing kill on the drow uh, leader. I, I I don't I don't remember Darlax being given the right of of a review of last session. I'm just translating. <laughs> 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 I remember Derelict had a death wish last session. Something like a... <laughs> oh, he has a death wish. Dan. He was all Lieutenant Dan on us. The, uh, Derelict, I think, pulled a mug lug last session. Yes, he did. He came from the dead. It was very surprising. I thought he was gone. Actually, I think that actually saved us in some ways, didn't it? Just coming back from the dead. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, we're all doomed. So, um, 
you didn't just take out the Jarao. These were evil slavers operating throughout the desert. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah. and you pretty much sent them packing or slaughtered them. So uh, they had taken over the Sand Voyagers Guild operations. But now, because of your efforts, uh, Sand Voyagers Guild, which they control the uh, caravans, the free trade in and out of the desert or through the desert as well. Uh, now their operation can uh, can be put back together again as a result of your efforts. Now we can start a real trade with the Cisco Guild. Yeah, and uh, important thing to note, I have, uh, when I came out of the fight with uh, Fro and Muglug, I quickly put Fro on my shoulders, uh, on my shoulder, I should say, on my shoulder, holding him up, and I'm and I'm going to start the session marching down towards the bar with him on my shoulder. All right. So, uh, so Muglug uh, is bathing away in the bathhouse. Yes. Uh, I am very stinky. I have lots of wounds. And uh, it was a very um, hair removing uh, adventure. Who's this? Is I'm this like, Fro right here? No, uh, that's Derelax, and I'm carrying Fro. Okay. Muglug's in the back. I think that might be Rose. Okay, so uh, we're starting a session? Yep. All right, so as I march out of the Sand Voyager's Guild, I kick the door open, holding Fro on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. A shoulder. Yeah, single shoulder, like he's on my left shoulder, feet down, holding him up. And I'm like, hail to the hero. Hail to the great fro who has freed you, your lands from the slave trade of the drow, and free the sand voyage guild. Thank fro and raise your drinks high, for he has reopened trade with fro off the desert. Well, oh, gee, thanks. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm uh, uh, humbled by this praise and honor. I couldn't have done it without this fine fellow. He, he, uh, uh, raises uh, fro up like this, or you can see him like this, but it, higher above his head, and to everyone can raise their glasses to him. You're gonna try to drink me, are you? No, 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 no. So good, good, good. Uh, let's see, uh, where's this dude at? Oh gosh, he's gonna make me roll for persuasion. Oh, there we are. All right, so the let, me, let me bring this guy over here. Sorry. I'm not used to this large scale of this map. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. And they're not even five foot squares. They're not even ten foot squares, right? Yeah, they're ten foot squares, yeah. Okay. So, Tomas Granicus, the... Uh, Sand Voyager's Guild uh, Master uh, says, Hear, hear! Raise a, a, a toast to Fro and Derelax. And where's where's that big dude at? He's baby. Thinking about I'll be back in it. So, uh, but raise to Fro, who killed their leader. Oh, thanks. Raise to a, toast, a toast to... The heroes of the oasis of the white palm. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Here comes uh, Rose running to you. I put Fro down and uh, I want to slowly do a stealth check and sneak out while uh, she's running towards Fro. That's okay. okay. All right. Uh, All right. Let's see. Stealth. What is he up to? Yeah, we'll see. Calabunga. No, I didn't do it. All right, here we go. (laughs) Um, As you are trying to set Fro down and back away at the same time, you slam into the door. It's one of those auto closing doors, and you just back right into it. Um, 
Give me a what? constitution check. <laughs> Him? Constitution. All right. Oh, come on. <laughs> Roll 20. That is finest. You are knocked out cold, flat on your ass. Hmm. This is not the session I want this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well. So they carry on because Fro and uh, Rose only have eyes for each other. Right. <laughs> My dear Rose, I must tell I missed you so while I was down in the throes. Oh, well, if you're going to sing, here, why don't you take up a place over here near the, uh, uh, where the lights are so everybody can see you. Is it all right with Hogan? He approves of free entertainment? Uh, quick question. Is anyone going to wake me up or just leave me there? Sure. We have eyes on Rose, the Rose is pretty much the... I mean, she's family, right? It's her it's her family mm. business, so she's cool with it. So she's cool to leave me knocked down on the floor. No, she's cool with Fro. She's like, Fro, don't be silly. Oh. Special request? Stairway to heaven? <laughs> Sing about, about your uh, adventures. Mm. How about um, Michael Bolton? Sing a... Uh, give, he... give me a... Per, uh, a what do you call it? Performance. performance. There was an itsy bitsy spider came down the spout. A performance roll. From the crowd. Well, and oh my, we all gave a shout. Do I get an advantage? <laughs> Damn, roll the six. It's, okay, good, it's good enough. It's good enough. Everybody is uh, has been in uh, in in dark spirits as of late. Uh, the it doesn't seem like people were spending that much money uh, because they don't have much to spend. Uh, a lot of them, you know, like we said before, trade is tight, and mm-hmm. and a lot of them are refugees. Here comes Tolnus Granicus. He's going to go ahead and try to help Darylax up. It's like, and he gets up. It's like, what happened? Oh, oh my head! You must uh. have had a flashback. Against uh, uh, of what happened last night, because mm. you you must still be seem to be recovering. Mm. Remember you get what happened last night. You cleared out the drow from the. Uh... Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes. And he looks at everybody's focused on Fro, right? Yeah, everybody's focusing on Fro now. Fro, Fro is pretty much uh, giving a. Uh... And uh, Darius gives a bow and goes, "I would love to stay in chat, but I have to speak with the Sheik about what has been done. I must report." They start to sing a glorious song about the dragonborn who came back from the dead. <laughs> so, so he tells you, uh, he tells you, "Come back and see me at the." At the Sand Voyager's Guild House, when you're ready, uh, I I can uh, explain to you where I believe uh, uh, Princess uh, is being held. This is the savior, of course. Or, but, the Sand Voyager's guy. Yeah. Before we do, uh, me and my friend. Oh, he already left. Okay. Oh, it's awkward conversations with Darylax. <laughs> It's because people don't know how to read Dragonborn uh, facial expressions. Of course they do. They have long stout. They start singing, uh, thinking about the bronzeness of Mr. Dra- Darylax. Uh, he is a bronze, right? Yeah, he's a bronze Dragonborn. Yeah, I think start thinking about the song from Rocky Horror, and I start singing about it. I've been working on a man with blonde <laughs> hair and a tan. <laughs> <laughs> now, that sounds crazy. <laughs> No, 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 that's not the I, I'm trying I'm still trying to find the right song. I've been out of practice for so long. <sighs> you say Rocker Horror Picture Show, and I already pictured that song for freaking Trump Curry. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you probably know the one. 
but uh oh, it's, not, it's not derelicts it's not derelicts okay anyways uh derelicts is gonna move out to go see the sheik while he leaves fro with his fans and everyone cheering him on to enjoy himself okay so are you gonna uh take uh go find muglug and take him with you I suppose Muglug would like to come too, but yeah, I'll bring Muglug along. So go, you'll have to find Muglug in the in the bathhouse. All right. I think he's still sort of uh, resting his achy bones. All right, where is that bathhouse? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. Um, as I finish my song, I'm gonna say to the crowd, "Wait, wait! I know what we need." Song is not what we need. We are in times of hunger. We need a buffet, a grand buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, let us show you what I've learned on the streets of whatever that city was. <laughs> and I started, started to prepare buffet from common ingredients that are usually overlooked and stuff. Okay, uh, give me a uh, give me another performance check. Uh, with advantage. Oh, sweet. So advantage is set. Performance. Oh. Nice. You oh, prefer a glorious feast. Okay. There's hummus here for those who prefer the beans. There's a uh, fine... Oh, yeah. <laughs> fine, delicately spiced meats of an unknown variety. <laughs> And uh, Rose asked people to uh, patrons to uh, provide um, money. Uh, or... One, uh, she's going to say five copper uh, per person, uh, with all the proceeds going to help the refugees. A grand idea, my dear. A grand idea. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> So this this is good. This uh, this uh, establishes not only yourself but Happy Hogan's as being a uh, a person of the people, right? And an establishment of the people. So uh, word starts to spread of the generosity of Fro the halfling and of the uh, Happy Hogan's igloo. Um, so, uh, Muglug and Derelax, so, uh, how's that conversation going to go? Mm. I mean, uh, Muglug, ah. uh, Derelax looks at Muglug and goes, huh. Uh, Muglug, put some clothes on. We need to go see the Sheik. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, all my clothes were burned. Oh, you're going to have to find me more clothes. Grab one of the towels, and I'll ask the sheep for... Luckily, luckily, this establishment right here sells uh, clothing and whatnot. Uh, I'll just go buy Muglugs and find his clothes. And no, Muglug mug wear a towel. Muglug good. Okay, I drag Muglug wearing a towel, and it's like, we need to close fast. He needs to see the cheek. Fine clothes. One gold, please. All right, one gold. Do you uh, dress right or dr uh, never mind? It's quite obvious. It's <laughs> Muglug. <laughs> almost ready. Getting dressed. Oh, boy. Are you going to turn on your video to see show us how you're dressed? No, thank you. There. All right. So, uh, okay, so y'all are going to go to the uh, to the sand to the uh, nice. Oh, <laughs> Mug look, wear a towel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So um, y'all are gonna head to the uh, to the sheik's tent. All right. Let's see who's who. 
Who's there when we last saw? Uh, Derelict. And, uh... Alright, well, Fro's not there. We'll just bring Fro out. And for now. Yeah, I'm trying to send word, send start a rumor to find Ned the Pie Man. He can really help this buffet out. Nice. Uh, uh, you can um, also check with uh, the Sand Voyagers Guild. He can also send messages on your behalf. Okay. And he should yeah. be able to reach out to Ned the Pie Man. But there be uh, pie. Very pie. Okay. Anyway, back to them. So, uh, Derelax, you uh, are going to the, the Sheik's Court? Yes. All right, so... Um, I wonder if I can start a, a side bet with the other false uh, bard in the bar about how long it will take before they'll end up in jail. These two. <laughs> <laughs> so then... <laughs> Not long. <laughs> Not long. So the sheik uh, tells you, uh, so what is your report of the uh, Temple of Set? Well, not only has the cult been cleared, which you probably already know, but we've also found the slavers that took over the Sand Voyager Guild and they've been cleared. There are no more drow in charge. They have all been slain. Their leader has been slain personally by our comrade Fro, and I would recommend some award and medal as a sign of good favor for him. And in Happy Hogan's is where he's at. Muglug fought bravely. He slayed several spiders with his chair. He squished them, no less. But <laughs> but the battle did cost him him to get burned so he is got he's not without scars in a sense um i managed to slay a drow their drow's wizard and so forth and we fought we fought mostly bravely but if there was any fall it was with me but we have freed the trade ways for you and we have received information on maybe where the bride is, and we are since we complete all our tasks here, we will set out to find her and bring her back to you. Good sir. And I kneel on one knee and just kind of do a bow like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Um. So he tells he asks you how soon can you get underway towards rescuing the princess and actually this is the prince that steps forward from uh besides the sheik uh the elder prince uh and he asks how soon can you get underway well that depends we've we're, we're tired and exhausted from battle and we as all soldiers need to recover from battle and plus any things we need to deal with like, I just recently, I don't know if you know this, but I was a slave before I, when I was put in arenas, and I just recently got in contact with my family, so if anything came up, I will write to them, deal with that. Just personal matters, and once soon as all those are cleared, we will go. It won't be long. Well, we need you to make haste. Set out tomorrow, at first dawn. That sounds fair. Uh, in the meantime, uh, go see the cleric uh, next in the tent, adjacent tent. I believe you've met him before. He is the uh, high priest. Uh, maybe he can attend to Muglon's wounds. And uh, I also believe that he has personal business. Uh, he was asking for you about recently. I think it has to do with a caravan that came in from Bralazar uh, yesterday. I have suspicions that it may have arrived as soon as we defeated the drow. Which is why I asked Muglug to come and get his new teal and say farewell. Very good. Go talk to the, to the uh, high priest. Then. 
Is there anything more you need? My my cheek. When you set out tomorrow, go to the stables. Understood. And uh, Derelict gives a deeper bow mm-hmm. than the one he was holding and just uh, gets up, taps Muglug on the shoulder to kind of follow him to the uh, tent of the cleric. And uh, that's the one right next to it, right? Uh, yes. All right. Okay. Once we're at range of the sheik and his men, I'm like, I'm to like Darlux, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Darlux rolls his eyes and goes, <sighs> "You let that sheik, that, you let that sheik treat you like trash." We're great warriors. You should be proud. <laughs> Tell me, my lord. How can I be proud when all our comrades are dead? Because we are still alive. We honor our comrades by killing more. Taking vengeance. Taking What's your the life? point of living if you don't have any comrades to spend it with? Ha ha! Our comrades are all around us. So you say. And Derelict just walks into the tent. Okay, Muglug, will you follow? Sure. Muglug falls. Right. Where is Muglug? Muglug? Muglug somewhere around here. Oh, here he is. Muglug falls. Okay, so here in the tent, <laughs> you see the uh, the high priest. Uh... Yeah, let me Hi. make sure that I know his name. Hold on, I had his name. Right. What a nice shade of blue you are wearing today. <laughs> Must be high priest Obi Wan. <laughs> <laughs> no, we there's go. a specific name here. Hold on. Oh, yeah, it may be important for the adventure, right? Ah, that's what I could be doing. I Ma- could be reading. Madron Elanis, the cleric of a new. Oh, wait, too. And he says, uh, uh, we have your, uh, fallen comrades, uh, they arrived, uh, yesterday from, uh, the caravan. Uh, we are ready to perform, uh, services for them if you are. If it's all right, I'd like to give a few last words to them, to the bodies. All five of them are there. Mm-hmm. So um, he asks you that uh, if, if it, you want to do like a funeral pyre or do you want them buried in the desert? Mm. In the oasis area? I like to do a. Uh, I'm thinking, and Daryl likes to thinking. I believe a funeral fire would be most suited for their thinking about their way of life. A. They okay. would probably prefer a funeral fire. Okay, so they will set a pyre. It will be one for all of them, uh, arranged uh, in a circle. All right. Um. So they go out into the desert. Um, the sheik, they 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 uh, they start a procession. The procession actually starts. Oh, uh, uh, can I like, you know how they have like uh, open caskets for private sessions where they talk to each of their members. Uh, the disease. Yeah, they're not they're not uh, open caskets. They're all bound up. I mean, you can kind of unwrap them to check them before you uh, before this uh, ceremony. Yeah, well, I wanted to have like a private talk to each of them. Okay, so you yeah. can do that in a tent before the before they t- they go off to the um... being on fire. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what Darlax will want. 
Okay, so go ahead and uh, do you want to uh, talk about what you say, or do you just want to just have, or are you just going to talk about what you do for each of them? I'm going to talk in about general, what I do in general for terms. each of the, um, each of them, and uh, and each what he's going to say with words it has a speech for each of them. Okay, no pressure. Um. I think he's going to go to spinner at last. And is Mugla, the question is, is Mugla with him, though? Does Mugla want to be with him, or is he just going to leave him to speak to him? Uh, you can talk to him as much as you like. Uh, they're already dead. So you're going to leave it private in yeah. the back tent, in the back of the tent? So Muglug will wait outside the back of the t outside while you're in the back of the tent with them. Yes. All right. And uh, Derlax uh, goes to Goyrin first. Goyrin, so you unwrap the head of a male deep known. Mm hmm And I. Uh, look at him kind of tries to hold in his tears and uh, looks at him and goes I never was good at counting money there's Mogulug for that matter you always counted for us you were our bookkeeper and comrade in arms Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I forgot to mention that uh, he buys each uh, a trinket for mm -hmm. each of them. Okay. Uh, so for Goyrin, he picks up a quill pin and he sets it on him. Okay. And uh, sets a blank page book near him. He goes, "You are always alert, man of learning." The gods know you're probably smarter than me and both Muglug put together, but that's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then you... I should, you know, and he says one last thing. He's like, I probably shouldn't be so mad at Muglug for your death. I just think it was so stupid that he thought that when you're casting a spell, it would be more immediate if he threw you to the enemy. That's not how magic works. Uh, I, I shouldn't be here. But I hope you find peace in your time and learning in the afterlife. And he puts the rat back on. And okay. goes to... Probably scuba next. The turtle. Okay. Female turtle. Yeah. Well, you have like all these names, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, she looks at her smush flattened body. <laughs> she got out of that airman's way. Oh, you're about to wait till you find out. Like, if you haven't been paying attention to the sessions in canon, you wait till you find out how she died. I don't know if it means much. Got stepped you out were, by me. You're probably the wisest of us. You are. You're very wise, and it depressed us that the Triceratops stepped on you, but we killed it ferociously for it to avenge you. <laughs> Though now I think about it, it was probably easy on our part, but we just want you to know. Mm -hmm. That you'll and Muglug and my new comrades are finding peace. Mm -hmm. As okay. you always what, wish. Never. What do you? What trinket do you give her? I gave her uh, an animal first, and uh, sewed together with feathers and all sorts of beasts, and I okay. laid that on her, like as a kind of like a blanket. Okay. Okay, who's next? 
and uh, Derelict's still trying to hold back the tears. And then he goes, takes a deep breath and goes, Oh boy. Shira and Grega. And he goes to Shira and uh, like, like looks at her cloth, makes her it's a tabaxi. Your style with the dagger and sword sword was unrivaled. You were the stealthiest and most cunning of us. It's a shame that you fell in combat. And it's a greater shame that Muglug didn't know you and Grega's feelings towards him. I don't think he'll ever will. And he just gets this like cheap, uh, finely designed dagger. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's like really sharp and really cuts. And I put it by her and it has like a cat eye at the uh, pommel. Okay. And then I go to Grego. And I heave this heavy axe. And I go, Grega, I know you had your personal issues with Shira over Muglug. Can't believe two women actually fought over him. <laughs> but that's Muglug for you. Full of surprises. <laughs> you are the strength in, of our group. You were, you can, you're the only person that could probably beat a uh, glug in an arm wrestling match. So it saddens me that you're gone. I like to, to note that you and Shira were like sisters, bickering sisters, but sisters nonetheless. Are I they hope all bicker? Oh, what? Don't they all bigger? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I hope that you and Chira find peace with one another in the life after this. Okay, so then you wrap back up the female Goliath. Yeah. And finally, is the female Drow. And I thought about this for a while, and then uh, Muglugs, not Muglugs. Yeah, it's confusing the characters again. Derelax. Is gonna pull up a chair or a seat of some sort and unwrap a spinneret and he puts down he puts a, a necklace with a jewel around her neck and gets a special thin blade. Mm-hmm. And puts her hands over it. He looks at her. And he puts his hand over her. And. He can't hold back to tears. He breaks down. <laughs> he pulls out his great sword. And puts it in front of him. And he looks at the pommel. And I probably never told you guys this. But at the pommel. One side is a dragon on the other half of the side of the pommel is a spider and when he and he spins it and it looks like the two are united and he goes all right my love you are our leader we were chained together when we were both bound as slaves since we were children I don't know how to move on without you. I don't know how to live without you. I found comfort in friends in arms. And after you died, I went back to the gladiator life, even though I promised I would leave, but I can't move forward. I don't know anything else. I don't know what to do. 
My deepest desire is to die so I can be with you, but I know that's not what you want. <laughs> Which is why I always charge into battle head first without thinking. Hopefully this will be my last. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what to do anymore. I've made plenty of mistakes along the way. <clears throat> but maybe if I fix them, I can find some sort of peace and join you or something. I don't know what to do. Just tell me what to do. I don't know what to do anymore in my life. You always were the brains to my bronze. Mm. And he goes, I will always love you. And he kind of takes out a, a violet rose. Mm-hmm. And puts it uh, by her hands. Okay. And, and he just, he's just kind of walking away, trying to hide his tears. Does was anyone listening? Vaguely, yeah. The uh, the high priest may have I'm... been listening, but uh, he, if he is, he's not giving any indication. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even there, so it's like, pfft. yeah. Well, yeah, having your fun. Yeah. Small gloves not in there. Yeah, so uh, Derelax goes uh, and he, before he leaves the, like the tent curtain door thing, he just takes one look back, takes one last back to spin around and uh, just walks out, try to keep his head hole high, try to hide his tears from everyone. Okay, give me a uh, sleight of hand check. Sleight of hand? Or a deception check, your your choice. I uh, probably get them both. Let's see, Daryl X. Uh, Dex energies plus two, Christmas plus two, plus two, so deception plus two, sleight of hand plus two, so either or. Let's do deception. Thirteen. Okay, it seems like most people don't notice uh, the tears from you. Alright. So, um... Uh, the, uh, the priest of Anu uh, says, okay, give me a... He says, give me a 15 minutes. Um... And he says, uh, and uh, we'll start our procession uh, from this tent, uh, and then we'll go to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the white palm itself, and then from there we'll go to the final uh, pyre. So um, he turns to Muglug. And he says, Muglug, if there's any that you uh, want to uh, notify of this funeral, um, have them meet us at the White Palm in 15 minutes. All right. In case you want to uh, find other members of your of your group <laughs> to what? join us. And then um, he turns to Derelax, and so... So he's giving you the opportunity to leave at this point, Muglug, if you want to. Yeah, yeah, I'll go get see if uh, Fro's interested in seeing this funeral thingy. All right. So then uh, he turns to uh, Derelax and he says uh, he hands you a cloth. And he says, uh, "Here, go ahead and uh, hold on to this for me." Uh, and then uh, he he uh, goes to the back room and then pulls the curtains and then he. Uh, he has some incenses and oils that he's uh, preparing. Um, so uh, you've got a few minutes uh, before he comes back out. 
uh, mm-hmm. derelicts. Um, and uh, all of a sudden you hear <clears throat> I turn around to look and it's actually not anybody there it's actually in your head yeah. it's like uh, sorry <laughs> sorry Darylax, uh I couldn't help but overhear what you said in there and you realize this is Captain Custard Captain Custard uh, you can, oh no, I you forgot can feel you the there. ring pulsing. <laughs> you forgot about the ring. <laughs> he oh, says, uh, he says, uh, sorry, chap. Uh, I should have reminded you, but, uh, he says, you know, I've been, uh, watching you, uh, this time, and, uh, I did sort of remark to myself about your apparent death wish. He says, and it's really sad to see, but now I understand why. Uh, I had some uh, soldiers under my command who suffered from PTSD, and you were totally exhibiting signs of that. And now I understand. Mm. He says, um, I don't know how to help you with that. He says, but I do know this. I have seen what you and your companions do and are capable of doing. He says, you were meant for great things. I know you were meant to save this desert. He says, I believe in you. And I believe that you don't need me anymore. Would you do me a favor, though? Because I do feel... I, at first, I had felt that you were the one who should take over as captain of the guard here for the Sheik at the Oasis of the White Palm. But now I see that you were meant for even more things, more greater things than that. He says, pass the ring on to somebody who is worthy, somebody who can become captain of the guard and serve the Sheik, both the current and the future Sheik well. Uh, and then go on and save the desert like I know you are destined to do I'll try to find someone who is worthy it's, it's hard to find someone honorable in this desert well <laughs> I have a few list of people that I could recommend I just don't know if they survived or not with the, all of these attacks So, uh, at that point, um, you escort the priests and you uh, escort the bodies in a procession, and then y'all go to the White Palm itself. Mm. Have y'all actually seen the White Palm before? No. I don't know. Nope. So, um... They go through a so the so the priest goes through a, a ceremony, and some people start to gather around. Uh, they appear to have overheard Muglug and Fro. Uh, I think Rose is joining you as well, Ooh. and so they're there gathering at the uh, White Palm, and the priest gives a speech about the honor of uh, Derlax, Muglug, and Fro. And the mm-hmm. honor of their companions as well. Um, he reads out their names. Spinneret, Grega, Scuba, Shira, and Gorin. And he pulls a date from the white palm tree. So then... The procession carries on a little bit further past the desert. Um, or I should say past the oasis itself. Uh, this is the oasis. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say he carries the... that he They carry the bodies down here. So it's a fairly long procession. Yeah. And it is there that they set the pyre. The funeral pyre. And I, uh, on the way there, I'm going to whisper to Fro. 
when they light the fire, we will, me and Mugluk, will give a full on salute. You will act and do the same. Okay. Right. So, uh, the priest gives his a prayer, and uh, they light the fire, and it starts to burn. And then uh, Derelax, uh does a full-on salute with his hand uh, pounding onto his chest and looks at Muglug and uh, Frode, expecting him to do the same. Muglug holds up his radiant um, uh, hammer maul in the air with one arm and taps his chest to Valhalla. Okay, so um, the fire burns for a couple hours. Several hours. Ooh. And once our ashes have cooled. Can I sing the God oh, the fire's burning? Can I start singing songs of military prowess and might? Oh, Danny boy. You can. You can, you can do that. Give me a performance check yeah, with advantage. On. Kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> That's not military songs. <laughs> Actually, did, I think Daring Boy may be a military song or something. Mm, I don't see you have a is. DM inspiration as well. Uh, what, was, it, <laughs> was it a bad roll? I don't know. How bad, oh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, 13th session, 13th performance. So another drill attempt. Yes. Yeah, oh, jeez. They're all over to place that one. <laughs> or which one is it? Or it's the 22. twenty. Yeah. Twenty, yeah. Yes. So, uh, so a lot of a lot of the uh, a lot of the refugees from the nearby camps have kind of wandered over, and they've also uh, sort of uh, taken to you know taken in and solemnly uh, participating as well and observing Fro's performance. Um, and then once the fire has died down, uh, the priests gather the ashes together and they bury them in this they bury the ashes in the sand. And then he pulls out the date from the white palm, and uh, he plants the date, and uh, he gives another prayer. Um, and within one week, this will be a, a full-grown palm tree, uh, yeah. growing. And in that way, uh, your fallen comrades will also live on. Here in the desert. Nice. Daryl's cries a single tear. In all seriousness, he really does cry a single tear. <laughs> okay. So, um, let's see. What's that big smoky thing? Is that the Phoenix or something? Uh, that was. I think that was where there was like a camp that had been burned previously, the ashes. Oh, yeah. Uh, so let's see. Back so in that, there. that night you are uh, back in the guild house. Doing a rest. So. Um, Tolnus Granicus is there and he's ready to go over the. Uh, the map of the desert and uh, inform you of where he believes uh, you should search for uh, Princess Shadala. Oh, that's a mouthful. Now, does anyone want to take notes on this map? <laughs> or to take notes on the side? I mean, he's going players. to, he's just going to review it to you, review the location with you. Okay. And he's going to tell you that. Um, He says uh, that based on his travels, he was aware of a uh, secret uh, crypt, um, um, a 
about, I want to say, two days travel from the Oasis of the White Palm. Two days land travel. However, um, and some of the tracks that he had seen in the past, the from some of the random uh, desert attacks, crawlers. desert attacks, there there have been left tracks that always seem to lead in that direction. Mm. So he's sort of put two and two together and decided that that might be the location. Um, of course, you know the evil Ifriti has you know has his undead army, so you need to be careful. Um, maybe these are the same guys who attacked Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> they were the ones who attacked Lieutenant uh, or Captain Custard. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so now um, he's kind of provided you with a location, and he says, "I hear the Sheik is uh, providing you uh, with Phoenix, with uh, with um, not Phoenix, with Pegasi." Uh, from the air lancers, uh, they will escort you. Um, nice. That's very nice. That's very so nice. that you can bring back the uh, the princess uh, safely. And I, 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 I whisper in Darlax's ear, uh, do you know how to ride? Yeah. <laughs> Not sure what you I'm do, <laughs> do these things come with training wheels? No, you'll be uh, riding with a, with a symbiont air lancer. Oh, phew. Couples <laughs> fight. Do they think we fight? So um, he says wait, they're wait, not for years wait, to keep. Wait. The Symbian Airlancers will be riding them, uh, but at least for this mission, because uh, the Sheik and his son are very worried, uh, he is going to arrange that for you. Uh, let me rephrase that. Do we have any mercenaries or anything like that joining us to help us in our fights? No. No. They're like, smug look. You didn't negotiate mercenaries? And Derek puts his hand on uh, Fro's shoulder and he's like, we will be fine. We've nearly died every time this just for the three of us. Do we have that funny staff that the <laughs> cleric had? That would be useful. M Sorry. Muglug puts his hairless arm on Fro's shoulder and says, we will be fine. <laughs> We're all going to die. <laughs> so, can, I, uh, can I take a do over and get some mercenaries from the Sheik? We'll that's, not gonna that's not going to happen because there are still uh, skirmishes uh, happening uh, because of the uh, Efridi and his uh, undead army. So, uh, there's constant geez. skirmishes occurring. Um, it's only because you've uh, secured his own safety, right, from the uh, from mm -hmm. the evil um, cultists and the uh, slavers guild, right? That he can spare these troops now. Uh, to, uh, these these, uh, these air lancers. Can we recruit some uh, mercenaries out of the uh, refugees. Mm -mm. There's mean, no time. They're they're not even uh, able to be uh, to be uh, useful to you. It's, you're you're on your own. But you've proven yourself to be uh, worthy and valiant. So. Note to self, next time don't be so worthy about <laughs> Jeez. Well, anyone heed the call? Anyone out there in the grand universe, come and join us. So the next morning, um, you head out to the... To the stables. Stables, and... Uh, uh, you're you're assigned with your uh to your uh to your riders. Um, there are also two est extra um Pegasi uh air lancers, mm. uh Darko and Stormy Knight. Let's see that. So um, uh, one of them obviously will be uh ferrying the princess, and the other is a runner. So he'll be constantly cycling off, uh, reporting your position back to uh, back to the main camp. Is and I examine is each night. Uh, I examine each night up and down. Just uh, you hear a point. whisper in your ear. Uh, 
uh, the Dark Knight. He was always a little off-putting, mainly because of his voice, but uh, he was very worthy. And then, uh, like, and Derelix, uh takes uh, Dark Knight aside. May I speak with you? Uh. <laughs> okay, but make it quick. You've got to get going. Oh, I was hoping she'd have a really high voice. <laughs> real quick, can you, this is probably metagaming, but real quick, can you say where are they? Where are they? <laughs> yes. Does he have a mask on? Yeah, yeah, I was hoping you guys catch on to that one. But he goes, I wish to have a private word with you. Make it quick. I can't be the captain of the knights. So it was up to me to look for someone worthy to serve the sheik and the next sheik as the captain of the knights. Do you feel that you're up to such an honor? He stops and he thinks about it. And uh, 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 right now you hear Captain Custard whisper in your ear, uh, Derelax. He says, Derelax, it was great being with you. Go with honor, my friend. Go with honor. And uh, the Dark Knight says, some people Hell think no. people are bad, but people are good. They want to do good. <laughs> oh, I want to do good. <laughs> then Derelix uh, takes the ring off and it goes, I wore this to you. The ring of the previous captain. May it serve you well. Captain. He puts it on. He looks at it. And then he was like, he looks around. What is this? What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> the soul of the previous captain lies within that ring. He asked me to choose someone more of you to be the captain. I believe you are the worthy of his mentorship and wisdom to be, as the next captain. I will speak to the sheik and use my influence to make you captain. Captain. And he kind of gives a salute. Ah, damn it. He salutes back and he says, all right. Now listen up. You've all been assigned knights to help guide your Pegasus. It's on my understanding that you know the location or you have the rough idea of where to go. Derelax, I'm, I'm assuming down. you're taking the lead. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so you and Heat of the Night will be uh, in charge of this group. Uh, meanwhile, Stormy Knight will be constantly cycling back every couple of hours and reporting back your whereabouts. Darko Knight here, you'll see that he's unaccompanied, but that's because he's counting on you to rescue the princess so that he can rush her back here. Is that understood? Understood. And he kind of nudges Fro and Mugalek to respond as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tolnus Granicus tells, steps up and he tells you one last thing. He says, uh, look for the ruins of an amphitheater. Ruins of an amphitheater. Mm-hmm. Anyone making a note of that? Anyone? Anyone? Players? Players? A- ample, ample what? Amplitude. Amplitude. Look for Amplitude. her wave. Oh, wait, wait. Amphitheater. So, um, you take off. 
I've Ooh. never been to a theater before. Well, you were in the Coliseum. I don't know if it's close, but it's similar. Are they? Wow. I have been to a theater before. Yeah. <laughs> um, Daryl is just shaking his head, thinking to himself. Now he's just going to run into a theater and slay all the actors. I just know it. Well, just don't kill the princess. That's all. <laughs> I'm talking about like an actual theater, not the ruins. Okay, so We're you start flying. <laughs> and luckily by air, it's only going to take you one day. Mm. Um, actually, probably not even one day. It should be half a day. Do we get any random encounters in the air, like a big rock? <laughs> um, and if, as a matter of fact, you do. So first... Uh, who first threw thing, a rock at me? First thing that happens is uh, you um, uh, you're you're heading in the direction that you need to go, and you find this huge dust storm approaching. Oh. Mm. See um, if we can climb, climb. Um, you start to climb, but then yeah. it's it seems like it's heavier, and there's lightning higher up. So it seems like your best bet is to try to land. And, uh, dive, be- because uh, <laughs> otherwise it might be damaging to the uh, to your Pegasus. All right, yeah. uh, um, we will land on the biggest, safest spot that looks like it has sheltered, like rocks, a cave, anything. Okay, so there, there's not really much except open uh, area at this point, but um, I want everybody to go ahead and give me a perception check. All right. With disadvantage because right now the uh, the sand is really kicking up. All right. Oh great, low wisdom. Okay, so um... yeah, that, that stunk. Mm. Nope, don't see a thing. No, oh. nope, don't see a thing. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's pretty bad. So. As you start to, to come down to the ground, you've got about like a a forty foot ceiling, and uh, suddenly, uh, oh, let's see, you've got one of these guys on your tail. Oh boy! Uh, because none of you noticed it, he uh, had a surprise round and he was able to close in. Uh, oh, is that a rock? It is. Oh. Here you go, rock. Here's your rock cheat. <laughs> In fact, I'm disappointed. Can you not see his name? Oh, those who about to rock. Yeah. Or those, or those who about to rock. I thought you were going to do a Dwayne Rock joke. Hey, man, what's the title of this adventure? This <laughs> session? Oh, we are about to salute you. All right, so let's see. We will, we will rock you. Oh, initiative. So click on the person. Yeah. Find me. Person. Here I am. Hi, you guys. Find my initiative. Yeah, it gets very high. Hi, guys. Oh, maybe Does it seem hostile? Threatening? Oh, yeah. But you don't need a horse? <laughs> is it actually headed towards Darko Knight in that Pegasus, or is it uh, oriented in a different manner? It may be oriented in a different manner. Oh, uh, you're gonna turn it towards to see where where the target is. Nope. No, oh, I'm not mm. going to turn it towards you. Everybody, we are under uh, obscure conditions because of the heavy sand. You've got about a twenty foot ceiling, and that's about it. Twenty foot to get on uh, between us and the ground. Yeah. Mm. Above that, the sun and the sand and the lightning is just. 
too strong in the wind, it'll just break your Pegasus wings. So I guess we race to the bottom. So Mugluck, you are up. Um, what what size does this rock be? Well, the rock okay. is gargantuan. Gargantuan. Eh? Yeah, it is. What forty foot across or something? Or yeah. So there should be a uh, a an aura around it to indicate the number of blocks that it's taking up. Right. And how high are we right now? You're about twenty feet high. I mean, I, I, was, I should say you've got a, you're at twenty feet currently. You've got twenty feet below you, and you've got twenty feet of room above you. And the rock's about the same level as us. Yeah, he's swooped right, swooped right, swooped right into your level. Is he like are surrounding us right now, is, or is he like doing a flyby or something? Or? No, he's right in the midst of you. Hmm. Mm. If if I tried to swing at him, do I feel like I could hit him? Uh, yes. With a yes, you do. So right now, I've just got you sort of arbitrarily located on your Pegasus, which is uh, four squares. But uh, mm -hmm. you can, you can, we can rotate or spin uh, your position relative within that Pegasus. Okay. Um. And uh, hard days. Hard days is, uh, is 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 driving the Pegasus, right? That's right. Hard days night is driving the Pegasus in your case. Okay. Um, then um, I think Muglub's just going to um, rage and attack the uh, attack the uh, the rock. Mm -hmm. He is going to do it recklessly. Uh, so right now we have disadvantage. Yes, because of the weather, right? And this, this, this. That's right. Yes, everybody okay. has disadvantage, including the knights, the Pegasus. I'm uh, sure, the rock. <laughs> the rock does too. Wow. But he has advantage on perception checks normally, so it's a straight mm -hmm. roll for him. And I will try to hit the rock for 16 points damage. Well, what did you roll to hit? Uh, 21. Oh, there we go. Did you not see it? Yeah, uh, I see it. 21 hits. It scrolled up. It scrolled up. Yeah, sorry. A 21 will hit for how much? 16? 16. And I'm assuming a 13 misses. A 13 will miss. The Y Squisher 40K got rolled. Doesn't matter. I must have clicked on the wrong one. Didn't I give Squisher 40K to... Um, to... Uh, Darlax? I gave it back. Okay. At some point, maybe during the uh, recreational time. I usually use my chair. I just, for some reason, I still click on it. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Is that it for you, Muglug? That's it for me. All right, Foe, you're up. Okay. I'm going to... Can I attack, inspire, and also to ask my knight to land the Pegasus? Uh, you can ask him to land, but he's not going to be able to do anything until his turn. Understood, okay. I'm asking him to land, I'm going to inspire, and... I'll go and inspire Darylax, I guess, because he's next up. So here, Darylax, feel inspired. 
Okay, combat uh, inspiration, remember? And then I'm going to shoot twice with my bow at the rock. So neither of those hit. Pew, pew. Not used to the shooting from a mount thing. Yeah, and you have disadvantage also, anyways. Oh. So that was oh. your first call. Sure, I'll try it again. Because I guess I had disadvantage. See, there you go. You hit that one. <laughs> Four piercing points of piercing. Pew, pew, pew. Is vicious weapon. And realizing how bad the visibility is, I'm gonna put up my bow for the moment and think about something else next time. All right, um, Derelix, you are up. Can't find a disadvantage option. Oh well. Oh wait, is it here? Should be on your toggle. Do you not have it's toggle? Right, toggle here? Here. right underneath your. Um, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, right I underneath. Just, I just toggled it for you. Okay. All right. Um, do you, do you I'm do going to, okay. to uh, tell the knight go down as fast as you can. This they can't survive the storm. But uh, before I do that, I'm going to attack the rope or rock because I know one guy who calls it rope. Uh, well, don't know him, but I know of him. But anyway, mm -hmm. fun. Uh, yeah, he doesn't know. Yeah, a guy you don't know. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, he's watching with a chatter or whatever his name, or Ernesto's name is. No, know. it's not. That's not him. Uh, I'm going to uh, attack him uh, with Kefalax. Oh, is that 19? No, yes, it, yes, it is. Look at that. Five. Okay, so you're going to maneuver over here. Oh, uh, plus three. Yeah. Yeah, it's not crit. Yeah, but um, a 19 will hit. All right. 15 damage. And uh, I'm going to attack him a second time. Ah, oh, That's a one. Yeah, it is. Are uh, we within 30 feet of each other? I don't know. DMR, are we within 30 feet? I don't uh, think so. Be. Yeah, anyways. Uh, yes. I'm scared. Scared to what happens. Ask what happens. Oh. So we'll do the first roll. If we click on disadvantage, we'll take that first of the two rolls. Okay. All right. Then twenty-seven hits. No, no. Or... I'm saying roll it again. Oh. Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, 19 will hit. 14 damage. And second win. No, wait, it's not second win. It's Accent Surge. Accent Surge. Totally up. messed that up. Totally messed that up. Anyways, Action Surge. Do I get any more of those? No. This is what it was. Ratchable luck. My reactions used. And that's why I was asking, why are we within 30 feet of each other, I guess? Barely, yeah. right? Right, so I get two more attacks. 17 hit. Yes. Sweet. 13 damage. And 13 does not yes. hit. I'm... 13 Ledger. will not hit. All right. Or inspired. Oh, yeah, I can re uh, roll a d8. Or is it D6? It's a D8, but uh, the question is, do you want to use it now, or do you want to say... I'll use it, it now. Okay. Uh, 15. A 15 hits. Sweet. We have a target, folks. 15 is a target. <laughs> 12. All right. Okay. Now let's watch this rock tear into somebody. <laughs> and... Oh, yeah, there, I was going to do that, but that takes an action. Or can I use my movement to do it? He has uh, he has advantage on me on his attack if he wants to attack me. So I have a question. 
mm-hmm. for movement, could I jump off the horse onto the rock? You could. Yes, maybe. Uh, you'll have to make a animal handling. <laughs> no, it's going to be an athletics check. Or is it a grapple? Ooh, yeah, it might be a grapple. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a grapple. I think it's going to be an athletics check followed by a grapple. All right. So that would have to be next turn. Oh. Uh, All right. All right. So, um, it's Rock's turn. The Rock's about to about All to right. lay smack down on us. So he's going to attack. Gargantuan size also means gargantuan damage, right? Yes. Yeah. He's going to. He's going after uh, Stormy Knight. No, not Stormy. Oh, bye, Stormy. Oh, that's a hit. Oh yeah. Ooh. Nice knowing you. <laughs> and then he's going to tear his talons into him. Oh. Oh. Stormy goes down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I'm in a big way. He's oh, dead least. and he's in the talons of the rock. Hmm. Now, will the rock, is the rock smart enough to drop to the dead body to get another one, or is it going to just hold on to it? Maybe that's dead. Darren, can I just say about one thing about Stormy? What's that? One, two, three, you're out! <laughs> <laughs> um. It's... He died in a stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> or was it a stormy day? Is it still there? Maybe now it'll go it's away. Still day. So that's a good question. Let me see what he's going to do. Uh, I'm going to say he... Um... Dinner time. If we're getting rocks are intelligent or not, that's the real question. <laughs> oh, rocks are intelligent. Hmm. But its question is, what's he going to do? Does this one have little baby rocks to feed? What's he going to do when he's coming for you? Bad rock, bad rock. He, he is going to drop him. Oh. So that's a 20-foot drop. If he isn't dead already, this is a smush. Yeah, if, he, if he's not dead already, he has three death saves to make. <laughs> But does following count as like if a you, crit? Well, anytime you take damage when you're down, you take you, you do two fails, right? Okay, so then he's got automatic two fails, but let me roll the damage. So it's a... Uh... It doesn't matter. He doesn't take any damage. He's already down, right? Mm-hmm. I want to know if it's... Uh... Oh, if it overthrows? Yeah, if, it, if it's... If it's... Over a double his, or his yeah, full hit two d six, right? No, that's okay. Yeah, he, he's yeah. uh, yeah, you're right. It wouldn't matter. So he's got two. He's got two failed death saves on him right now. Yeah. I think if the damage is over over half his full hit points below negative, uh huh, he's instant killed or something. Like that? I think it's his full hit points. Uh, so that wouldn't have happened. Double your hit points maximum. And it's one d six per uh, ten feet, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, okay. Well, so he's got two crits, two death saves on him, or two failing death saves on him as a result of being dropped. So let me. Can you can you use your inspiration for death saves? I don't know. Don't... <laughs> if you inspire him, can you use? <laughs> And uh, the knight's turn. So let's see if if 
Uh, let me Night roll. of End Days. Let me roll the death save for Stormy. He's oh, dead. Stormy. Stormy is dead. Oh, poor Stormy. We barely knew thee. Actually, are we going to have to have a whole nother funeral for Stormy? <laughs> That's up to you. Uh, he's already getting buried by the sand. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. I wasn't expecting the humor to go to that dark. <laughs> so, okay. So that was Stormy. Stormy's down. So now let's go with night and day. Uh, he's going to... Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> that's why he has a double 22 on his attack. Because he's a horrible pun. <laughs> All right. Is he the one on me? Yep. Yeah. Is he, is he taking the Pegasus down or not? First, he's getting in a couple of licks. I see that. Um, hit. Yeah. That one does not hit. Mm. Maybe I need to sing you a great song. All right. So then, then he uh, he angles the uh, the Pegasus down. Uh, to land. Mm -hmm. uh, Grok is gargantuan. So I'm going to figure that he's probably... I mean, he's 40 foot on edge. Mm -hmm. Should right. I assume like a 40 foot cube? I guess because he could go rear up or whatever. And then yeah, it would be. Or nosedive and be heading down there. But uh, well, it's Are you asking if that. he would get an opportunity attack for going down? Yeah, would he get an opportunity attack or would you still just be within his. Uh... It depends well, on that. That's a good question. Okay. Uh, if it has 40 feet, all I would say it's three dimensional 40 feet cube all around, so you'd still be in slant side if you go down. Okay, that's the way I would call it. Okay, so you land, he's still within his life side, you haven't left his uh attack, attack range. Well, I guess we could sit, stay here for a moment. Yeah, I was hoping to maybe put it back away from this thing, but. So okay, so Derelax, you also uh, asked your knight to land? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so he did the knight is uh, going to also make two great sword attacks. Yeah, he did the knight. Is that the magic number? He misses on both. So our target is 15. <laughs> and you land as well. Uh, Darko Knight. Mm. He will also make two great sword attacks and miss. Roll twenties against us. And he's not ordering his horse to land. Oh. So the horse makes an attack. Nice. And does 13 bludgeoning to the rock. A uh, hard day's night. Did you order him to, uh, did you ask hard day's night to lower the land the Pegasus? I didn't, I didn't tell him to do squat. <laughs> All right. That's Ooh. a hit. Mug, Mug looks just that right there behind him, frothing and swinging his chair wildly. He got distracted by the froth. <laughs> he is he is my greatest enemy, the rock. <laughs> 
Sparkle. <laughs> and then uh, the Pegasus will uh, give his hooves 13 bludgeoning to the rock. And he's buried. Oh no. Oh, Muglug. Um You you did you did the runner's pegasus, right? Yep. Okay. That Pegasus has got a got a good lick in. Hey. Okay. Uh Muglug will um continue to beat the rock with his chair. Rockwag swing, Rockwag smash. Does, I'm, I, I think hit. it's going to be hits. 16 points damage. And then he'll swing his chair a second time Ooh. for 17 points damage. Um, does does this rock look look like it's uh, barely hurt? No, you're putting some good licks on it. Okay. Then I am done for now. Fro. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, seeing how Pegasus and the uh, fighters are doing really good just stuff. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna hop off here and uh, attack from the ground. Feel free to go back up if you want. Have this inspiration and then I'll inspire my night and day, I guess, guy. The core. Will be inspiration, or is it? There it is. Welcome. Uh, inspiration. Ding. So this is for my writer. Um, okay. And then I will viciously mock the rock and claim it's no scorpion king in these parts. So it's going to do a vicious mockery at it. So wisdom save. DC 14. Actually, I think rocks have pretty good wisdom. <laughs> I think they have pretty good at everything. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess it didn't like this. It didn't care about the Scorpion King. Uh, its intelligence probably isn't the highest, since charisma probably isn't that high either. Oh, great. You've got great ways. Of, well, I do have another way of doing it, but we could do a, a, a shatter as a spell, but I would burn a spell slot for one, and it's. For a constitution save? Yeah, it's a constitution. I don't oh, even no, don't, don't do a constitution save on <laughs> I don't even want to touch a constitution on this thing. Actually, uh, his wisdom's not that great. Hmm? His wisdom's not that great. He just rolled really well. I guess, yeah. Did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that it yeah. for you, Phil? Yeah, so I did a vicious mockery, and I inspired my rider, and then I hopped off onto the ground. All right, Muglug, or Derelax, sorry. You're up. Derelax, uh, is, it's 20 feet up, right? Um, so it's, you've got a 40 foot window to operate here. Okay, then I will, uh, uh, swing. Because you did not land? Uh, or you landed. I did, yeah, you landed. I landed. Yeah, so I'm going to yeah, so use it's 40 feet up. with disadvantage, but I don't sure. think it can any more disadvantage. Say that again. Uh, Sorry. I'm going to use my sling, but I couldn't get more more disadvantage. Or wait. You said 30 foot, right? I think you're still within reach of it. I think you're still within melee. Oh, okay. Now I guess I'll use Capilax again. Basically, or, it's so big that even flying down, it's you can still hit it. <laughs> oh. That hits. Mm -hmm. 15. That does not you're, hit. You're just like clipping it on the talons or something. You're clipping his talons. Like, this rock needs a, clim, a, a, a trim on his talons here. All right. It's the rock's turn. I'm a juicy target. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is 
And also, he has Garrett, advantage on me. Garrett likes going to have to bury another comrade. <laughs> Hopefully not. DM's he just probably engages. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. He didn't even get any food to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he had his, uh, he had his eyes on that uh, Pegasus. Uh, but but it was too much. Yeah, it's too painful for him. Do we get a tax of opportunity? Or I would disengage, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. disengage. Can we see where we're headed? He is headed back in the direction okay. west. 120 foot movement, so he's good luck. away. Yeah. Alright. So what is that? The disadvantage perception to see if we can get any idea of where it's going? It is disadvantage <laughs> perception, yes. Uh yeah, I'll do it too, why not? I'm probably gonna fail this measure but whatever. Is it, is it is it even safe to land? If we land, won't we get buried in the sand? Uh, it's safe to it's safer than flying because uh, the wings will be uh, destroyed by the yeah the Pegasus yeah. won't yeah you you risk breaking their wings. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's so. see. So so the the Pegasus disappears from sight. The rock. I mean, the rock, sorry, the rock. Uh, the Pegasus from the Fallen Runner lands. Uh, the runner, and... Um, we we will fight again, the rock. Yeah. This battle in the ring is not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you find also... Um, Yeah, the Another air lancers they start uh they they start um covering pitch up. Tent? Yeah, they they start covering up. I don't think there's even time to pitch a tent. I think okay. they just start covering you with a cloak, the horse and you uh, strapping the pegasus down and they all say just total together so let's uh and they they start lashing ropes so that way everybody's sort of holding on for dear life and the storm kind of really picks up even more. Just in case a big rock comes back and fucks one of us off for dinner. Uh, dear life is soon just going to scream at the night. What about you? Which night? Uh, the one with him. Uh, with you? Heat. Oh, heat of the night? Heat of the night, yeah. Did you say you love him? No. <laughs> that, that came out weird. No, let me rephrase it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, so the the Pegasus, the free Pegasus, um, he's without a rider now. Um, I'm Dark, Darko Knight says, "What's that?" I'm just asking the riders. How on top of the Pegasus? Like? Can I get back to camp? And, they can uh, get back to camp, no problem. Can I make some sort of call to get the Pegasus down here or make some sort of noise? No, the Pegasus has landed. Oh. Um, uh -huh. Well, we should probably write a note or something to attach to it if it goes back to camp to explain what happened. Uh, can... Oh, gosh. Uh, can Derelax risk safety by trying to help tie down the other Pegasus? Um... Yeah, you can you can do that. All right. Uh, you can assist the knights. They they are doing that. They're trying to tie down everybody. You can oh. help tie down the Pegasus. Uh, give me another perception roll, Derelax. All right. Am I still with disadvantage? Yes. Yeah. All right. Mm. Uh, that's slightly better. So. Um. You see, uh, the fallen uh knight. Is he dead? Oh yeah, he's dead. Is he undead? <laughs> Not yet. 
in this world you have to check. <laughs> uh, so I checked at night and for anything that would help tie down the horse or anything. And uh, has he been properly uh, venerated? And I uh, put his arms in a position, holding his weapon. You know, he had a great sword in the soldier position, so the sand will bury him and rush to the horse. And try are you to are him. you going to do that, or are you going to? Uh, Darko Knight says. Uh, lash him to his Pegasus, and his Pegasus will return him back to the Oasis. Oh, then I'll lash him to his Pegasus. And you're gonna leave a note. He fought bravely against a rock. Tell his family he fought with honor, and they should be proud. Okay. X X O O. I like to think Muggling just wrote that right. Before he yeah, like after he finished the note, he just comes up and like XXO. I mean, you don't know how to spell things, but I know how to write this at least. Muglug says, Muglug says, Gregor and Shira always used to write these when they send me notes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there used to be lots of X's nose on the notes they sent me. Other letters too, but lots of X's nose. <laughs> I'm like trying to stealth my hand in and going and put a big whip something out. But, uh, I don't think I made it. <laughs> don't mind me. Yeah, they're just moving through a sandstorm and, and then Muggle is like rrr, 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 and, and then you see Fro just going like this. Going, Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he probably has to jump. <laughs> that's why I found it. <laughs> the, wind's too, the wind's too strong. Whenever he jumps, he gets pushed back ten feet. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, the note says uh, he fought with honor, fought bravely against a rock, died a hero to risk seas, given proper burial, and uh, you know. It's, Send, give this letter to the sheik and say his family he fought with honor they should be proud and a hero and give him a medal or something like a purple heart or there's no purple hearts in favor um i'll be back in a second john and a <laughs> five of honor and yada yada give him a medal and then uh they were signed Darelax. <laughs> so, uh, oh my gosh I just said that Blair says chic. If Muggle like, seriously puts X's in those, I'm just going to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> just the thought of the chic reaction, just go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see. The, uh, man, I really should have, uh, I could have killed one of y'all, couldn't I? Could have. Um, May have not killed Muglug. That's true. Unless his talents count as magical weapons. No. All right. Who dies? So, uh, let's see. So, the storm passes. Um, the Pegasus takes off. Uh, with the fallen knight, stormy knight died in a storm, and it's accidentally tied to D- Alex's foot, and he's like, "No!" <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, y'all proceed onwards towards the uh, towards the uh, ruins. General location of the ruins, the the uh, crypt of Badar al Mosak. Um. Uh, as you are searching, uh, you do manage to spot uh, in the midst of rocky, low-lying hills, a few broken pillars form a circle surrounding a terraced bowl. Stone columns also lie broken, lie broken in, bo- in the bowl-shaped area, seeming to point with craggy fingers to the statue in the center. This is massive a... statue rises ten feet tall and is one, and is of one piece with the stone upon which it stands. Um, 
you can see that as you are circling. And uh, with that, we are going to end the session. You have found the Cryptobara Armosa. Now, um, I actually had a question. Mm -hmm. According to our map or whatever, and all of the various those, we need five drift globes. Or five balls, gems, five whatever. Five gemstones, yes. We only have three. Yeah. You say we only, think... but that's pretty good. True, true. Pretty good. Uh, do we think this is a place where there's a fourth gemstone, or do we think this is a place where we're supposed to take them all to at the end? You believe this might actually be the place of a fourth gemstone. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Yeah, Darylax knows nothing. That, that is some statue in the center. It looks like a, a statue. Yes, indeed. And once again, gentle viewers, if you want to join this party, this glorious party in their many mundane uh, adventures, um, write us, call us, do something. Just don't let us linger as three wary travelers. I'm talking to you, Chowder. And uh, with that, uh, we're going to end the stream tonight. Thanks for watching, everybody. Next weekend, uh, we will be playing Waterdeep. Right. Um, Bring out Nick. Uh, meow. Meow. That's right. So, uh, bye, everybody. Bye.